Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this very new session and the first lecture on database design and management. So here's the outline for this course. We shall cover a lot of information regarding database design and management, beginning with an introductory uh, lecture on what database is, forms of database and database management system. Uh, we we'll talk about a relational database management system. We we'll look into MySQL and um, cover a lot of things regarding MySQL database management system. So here's the objective for the first uh, lecture. Uh, just like I've said earlier, we'll talk uh, about this. It's just simply an introductory uh, class or lecture on database management system. So as usual, we have uh, some concept to cover. We have a class activity and then an exercise to round up. So <clears throat> to begin with, so what is database? So uh, I'd like us to have a little bit of revision on what data is before we actually come into what database is. So I believe we can think of a data as a small, as the smallest unit of information. And a data actually represent information about entities. So you can think of a person as an entity, an organization, an object, or even a student can be an entity. An employee can be an entity. Even a car can be an entity. So each of these entity actually have uh, some data that are actually attributed to them and this is actually what data is, those small units of information that we can attribute to entity. So for example, a person can have uh, data attributed to him like age, the age of a person, the name of that person, the gender, whether it's a male or female, the weight of that person, height, and so on and so forth. So the same thing with students, a student can have a lot of uh, data or attributed to him as a student per se or as an entity of a student. Maybe a student can have a matric number, a name, a date of birth, the entry level for that student, the program that the student enrolled for. You can also think of, okay, the department that that uh, student is and a lot of information like that. So it's the same thing for a uh, car too. It has uh, some entity like price, brand, uh, color, uh, transmission type, and so on um, and so forth. So let's have a very simple activity. So here we have three entity. We have uh, employee, we have product, and we have patient. I'd like you to pause this video and try to outline some data that you think ca that can be attributed to each of these entity. So so, so far, this is what I can actually brainstorm. So for employee, we can have entity uh, data like employee ID or staff ID attributed to an employee. An employee definitely have a name because an employee is a person, right? Uh, definitely has a gender. It can either be a male or a female. Uh, it definitely has a designation, whether uh, that employee is a uh, uh, Okay, in the case of, uh, depending on the kind of organization where the, uh, the employee is working, let's say it's an health organization, it might be a nurse, it might be a doctor, it might be a radiologist, and then definitely that employee will also have a rank associated to him or her. So the same thing for other entity, we have product, we have a patient, they definitely have a product, you may have entity like uh, data, like name, price, quantity, the category of that product attributed to the product entity. So the same thing for a patient too. Every patient will def definitely have an hospital number uh, attributed to him or her, the name of that patient, the gender, the date of birth, you may also have nest of kin and so on and so forth like that. So now what is database actually? Database is simply an organized collection of related data or information about some entity that are stored for easy access and modification. 
So when we have uh, data regarding a particular entity, so not just uh, one data, no, no, not just one data, maybe a collection of this data, however, not just for a particular, just one entity, maybe for a number of entities. So we may want to have a kind of way of storing this information in order for us to easily access it or retrieve it. And that is the essence of database in order for us to be able to store information and also retrieve information. So here you can see we have uh, data regarding an entity, which is in this case student. So not just one student, we have multiple students. We can have 1,000 or millions of student entity and each of these entity we have uh, different kind of data attributed to them and they are stored in, an, in a very collective and organized fashion that we can look at okay Abbas is her entity we can know is date of bed entry session current level if we are to look at Abbas Abbas we can also immediately uh, reference or uh, look into okay the current level of Abbas Abbas is entry session and date of birth like that. So in simply in the simple form that is what database is. So we actually have uh, two forms of database. This database itself can be in two forms. So we can have an electronic uh, database and we can also have the non-electronic database. So let's start with non-electronic database. They are simply a type, a type of database or a form of database that actually uh, it involves uh, keeping uh, our record or information in a kind of uh, manual, manual way. So <clears throat> when you go to uh, some organization up to date, you see they, can, they may have a shelf where they keep the kind of keep data or information regarding the entity, the kind of entity they interact with in that organization. They keep it within a shelf, and within those shelf, we may have different kind of files regarding each entity and information or data regarding that entity. So this kind of uh, form of database actually occupy a lot of space, and it could be costly to maintain because as the entity that are being managed keep growing, keep growing and keep increasing, then we need to try to look for more space to actually accommodate this data or information that we are storing about or storing for this entity. And if you are to look at the cost of acquiring these files and uh, uh, stationary is that we need to store this information we can see that this is actually a costly way of maintaining a database so uh, then we have the electronic database which is uh, an improvement to the non-electronic database the electronic database actually store data in an electronic device uh, with the head of uh, file processing system or a database uh, management system. So we have the file processing system and we have a database management system. So let's look at the file processing system. It's actually a method of storing, retrieving, and modifying data in various files. It is actually a traditional approach of storing data electronically because it comes with a lot of setback and as a result of that, uh, we, uh, we improve by having a database management system. So some of these setbacks that are associated to file processing, uh, this, but not limited to this, actually, we have the data redundancy. So in a file processing system, data can be uh, similar or the same data can be stored uh, across multiple different uh, files. So making it very redundant. So when we have uh, similar information stored in more than one files, so we, <coughs> we refer to that as uh, redundancy. So such kind of uh, situation or such kind of error do occur when we make use of file processing system. So 
And then another one is the data inconsistency. Data is usually not very consistent when uh, using a file processing system. And the reason being is that the file processing system, you may want to store a data, uh, a part of data in one file and some data that relate to that uh, data in another file. So, and in that case, and, and at a point, maybe in the file one, you are actually updating the information about the particular data. So you may actually update an information why, uh, why the second file uh, uh, keep having the, uh, the former data without being updated. So also let me, let me look at a very good example of uh, that. So imagine we have uh, two files and maybe file one, I, uh, we simply store information about uh, employee, just their paper data, maybe a name of an employee, the staff number and, and things like that. So anything bio information of an employee. So, and then the second data we want to store information about that employee uh, payroll or information about our uh, his salary and things like that. So in that file, maybe we may also need to have the name of that employee, the staff ID of that employee. We may want to have, okay, the, his designation, the amount, uh, maybe his wages and things like that. So maybe uh, at a point or so a situation arises that maybe that employee in the first file, his name actually was changed. Maybe that uh, employee is bearing Abbas Aliu and maybe his second name changes from Abbas Aliu to Abbas Isa. So uh, that might be a situation where that uh, file one will actually be updated in a way that, okay, it is updated to Abbas Isa while leaving that file two with the formal name of that empl employee, which is uh, an outdated information. So things like that is what we refer to as data inconsistency. Then we also have uh, the setback of data authorization uh, mechanism. Authorization mechanism is a very uh, is it's not available in file processing system. There's nothing like uh, user rules, privilege, and things like that. So the uh, users of the file processing system uh, they have the tendency of being able to access every file in the system. So there's, uh, there's no authorization mechanism where you can actually limit access of information you can uh, divide access uh, you can limit access and you can also distribute access to different kind of user you give different kind of user role there's no role or authorization mechanism with the file processing system and then lastly we have the limited scalability it is uh scalability is very limited and what we mean by that is as the data you store in a file processing system keep growing the file processing system itself will keep getting slower. So, <clears throat> so that's what we mean by uh, limited uh, scalability. So it's not very scalable. So database management system, which actually is, is, is a software program which is designed for creating and organize, organizing and managing database. And it tried to actually... Uh, it's tried to actually address most of all of the setbacks that uh, are available or with the file processing system. Things like data redundancy and inconsistency. We have uh, data, uh, there's a way we can relate data to each other. We can normalize data in order to avoid things like this. So we have uh, authorization mechanism. We give different, we create different kind of user you can give different user, different kind of privilege. And so they can only access what you want them to access in your data. And it is very, very scalable. So, so that's it. So, and some common uh, application of uh, this uh, database, uh, we have the banking system where we can keep record of customer, employee, and transaction. 
we have the airline system we can keep record of uh, reservation uh, schedules of flight and things like that even a university system to keep record of student their registration their results so and even in our social media that we interact with every day it's, it is uh, powered by a database based management system so to store all these uh, multimedia uh, to store all these the different user accounts content that we post on the social media like videos pictures and text and chats so <laughs> There are several types of database management system, but uh, we have uh, three common database management system. They are the relational database management system. We have the hierarchical database management system, and we have the no SQL database management system. So let's talk about the relational database management system. It's actually a type of database management system that store data in forms of tables with a relationship between them so usually data are stored in form of tables and we may have uh, a lot of tables uh, regarding just one particular database and there may be one or two relationship between these tables within that database so example of such kind of database management system is microsoft access we have the MySQL, we have Oracle, and so on and so forth. Um, then we have the hierarchical database management system. So in this uh, database management system, data are, are usually organized in a tree-like structure, and there is usually a parent-child relationship between this uh, data. So, and the um, example of such a uh, system, uh, the window registry, if you look at the window registry, Usually, the f uh, information are stored in form of like uh, a parent child, this kind of parent child relationship. You see that uh, usually have key, and every key has a value, and this key are organized in an hierarchical fashion. So, and then we have the no SQL database management system. So, it's a kind of system that do not conform with the uh, relational. Uh, but the the ideology behind the relational database management system so and this kind of database are uh, used in an application where you store a lot of data like in a big data application and they can actually undo different kind of data both a structured data non-structured data or semi-structured data so example of uh, this system include uh, we have the mongodb we have cassandra and etc. So, relational database management system, I believe we've uh, explained what it is. It actually models data or uh, information in form of a set of tables. So, and these tables are the data organized in forms of rows and columns. And we, we may have more than one data, sorry, more than one tables in a particular database, and there may be a relationship between each of these tables so and each of these table data are organized in forms of rows and uh, columns so in, in an instance where I want to store uh, information or about a student entity we organize it in forms of row and column so we have some field to uh, where we specify the attribute for each of these uh, entity that is uh, the data that can be attributed to it. For example, the matric number, the first number, uh, sorry, the first name, last name, gender, and date of birth. And then each uh, record or row within uh, that table will actually store information about just one particular entity. So and we can have uh, as many information, uh, as many entity as we want in a table. So uh, here's our circle class activity. So a university management system, uh, I believe we all know what that is, a large sophisticated system that covers functionalities like uh, student management, course management, faculty management, staff management, uh, and so on. So the student management functionality, actually just that's functionality of the university management system 
it may have uh, tables like uh, our admission table, the student table, fee registration table, and so on and so forth. So now uh, the question actually is uh, uh, you are meant to try to just brainstorm and think of the kind of data that can be attributed to each of these tables or each of these entities. So admission entity, what kind of data do you think an admission entity can contain or the admission table can contain? So the student table, what kind of data information do you think the student table can contain? The fee registration table, what kind of information or uh, data do you think it can be attributed to it? So you can try and pause this video and uh, just uh, give it a try. So, so this is what I can actually uh, come up with. So in our admission table, you know, definitely we need to have a serial number in order to keep track of how many students are uh, in our admission table, right? Uh, so for that reason, I think uh, one of the data will be a serial number. Then, then we need the name of the student, right? The student that we are trying to admit. So I have an attribute or data for first name of that student, middle name, and also the last name of that student. So and thereafter, faculty name, that is which faculty we are trying to admit this student to. And then within that faculty, we may think of, okay, what department is this student, would this student be admitted to? And then the program that this student actually enrolled for. So uh, we can think of the session that the student uh, actually wants to uh, enter the university, right? So session is also another data or attribute that we can attribute to admission table. Then, so some information about the student, maybe the gender, date of birth. So we may also want to know whether, since an admission table may have a data like is admitted. So we want to, because it's simply an admission table, I keep track of every application for, of admission. So and not all of these uh, applications will be admitted. Some will be admitted and some will be uh, uh, denied admission. So for that reason, we also want to know, okay, which student are admitted or not. So we have a column called is admitted. Also have admission type to know what kind of admission. Is it... Uh, is it direct entry or is it through post or is it through uh, jam UTM, right? So, and then want to also know the UTM score of that student. And we may also need the credentials of that student, like his SSC result and so on. So, now for student table, uh, <coughs> let's assume um, student table or the student entity is okay, where we keep information of applicants from this admission table that has been admitted right so we also want to keep track of the number of students right so for that reason we also we may want to have a serial number or also uh, every student to definitely have a matric number or registration number then we have the first name middle name and last name gender of that uh, student uh, the is date of birth session admission type admission level so student can be admitted by maybe direct entry so automatically that student is going to 200 level and if it is uh if it is ja, true jam ja, maybe is going to under level so things like that we want to know the admission level and then maybe the current level of that student the student might have been promoted so we so we also want to keep track of that as students are being promoted uh, as they are finishing a session they are moving towards another session as they are progressing so we want to know the current level and the faculty name department name and program so fee registration table as well so as students are paying their registration fee we want to keep track of that information right so what kind of data do we need in order for us to keep track of such kind of information we need maybe a student matric number we also want to know okay the session of uh, uh the session for which that student is actually making the payment right 
and amount that the student has paid and depend we may want to know okay what balance maybe uh, we have a system where student can pay installmentally so for that reason maybe we want to know amount that student has paid and then the balance or amount remaining for the student to pay so we want to know whether the student has been cleared maybe he doesn't have uh, maybe the balance is zero so that means the student has been clear he has paid all the amount needed so we may also want to know the student name his first name last name middle name gender date of birth program department name and faculty name like that so that's as uh, that's it for the admission table student table and a few registration table so here are some exercise that i want you to, to practice the first exercise is uh, I want you to outline the tables with the fields or column. So what I mean by field or column is simply the data that we can associate to each of these table or entity. So for the following functionality of the university management system. So uh, at, the, at the beginning of this class activity, we talk about the university management system and we mention some of the functionality like student management, course management, faculty, and so on. So, and for just uh, the student management uh, functionality, we are able to uh, deduct these uh, tables or entity admission, student fee registration, just like that. So now for course management, I just want you to think of what kind of entity can be uh, involved in a course management system. So try to think about it uh, try to extract tables or entity that can be involved with this course management and after extracting it try to think of uh, data that can be attributed to each of these tables so the same thing for faculty management staff management and results management system so uh, the second exercise is I want you to identify some possible functionalities and database table and field for each functionality. So we have uh, airline reservation system, hospital management system, computer based test, electri electronic commerce, telemedicine, and so on and so forth. So each of the system try to uh, think about what functionalities that uh, each of these system. Uh, I, I are capable of handling and then for each of the functionality try to extract entities or tables that is associated to that functionality and thereafter try to extract data that can be attributed to each of these table or entity so that's all for the first lecture uh, thank you very much